The Lahore Resolution Urdu, Kurdad Lor Karadad e Lahore, Bengali, Lahora Prastaba Lahore Prostab, was prepared by Muslim League Working Committee and was presented by A. K. Fazlul Huq, the Prime Minister of Bengal was a formal political statement adopted by the All India Muslim League on the occasion of its three-day general session in Lahore on 22-24 March 1940. The resolution called for independent states as seen by the statement, that geographically contiguous units are demarcated into regions which should be constituted, with such territorial readjustments as may be necessary that the areas in which the Muslims are numerically in a majority as in the northwestern and eastern zones of British India should be grouped to constitute independent states in which the constituent units should be autonomous and sovereign, although the name, Pakistan had been proposed by Chowdhury Ramit Ali in his Pakistan declaration, it was not until after the resolution that it began to be widely used. Muhammad Ali Jinnah's address to the Lahore Conference was, according to Stanley Wolpert, the moment when Jinnah, a former proponent of Hindu-Muslim unity, irrevocably transformed himself into the leader of the fight for an independent Pakistan. Topic historical context Until the mid-1930s the Muslim leaders were trying to ensure maximum political safeguards for Muslims within the framework of Federation of India in terms of seeking maximum autonomy for Muslim-majority provinces. They got some safeguards through a system of separate electorate on communal basis in the 1935 Government of India Act. As a result of elections held under this Act, Indian National Congress formed government in six out of eight provinces. During Congress rule from 1937 to 39, its high command whose iron control over its own provinces clearly hinted at what lay ahead for the Muslim-majority provinces once it came to dominate the center. Much of the League's propaganda at this stage was directed against the Congress ministries and their alleged attacks on Muslim culture, the heightened activity of Hindu Mahasabha, the hoisting of Congress tricolor, the singing of Bande Mataram, the Vidya Mandir scheme in the central provinces and the Warda scheme of education, all were interpreted as proof of Congress atrocities. So, the Congress was clearly incapable of representing Muslim interests, yet it was trying to annihilate every other party, therefore by 1938-39, for most of the Muslim leaders, in or out of Muslim League, the idea of separation was strongly gaining ground. The Sindh Provincial Muslim League Conference held its first session in Karachi in October 1938, adopted a resolution which recommended to the All India Muslim League to devise a scheme of constitution under which Muslims may attain full independence. The premiers of other Muslim-majority provinces, e.g. A.K. Fazl ul-Haq and Sir Sikandar Hayat Khan Punjab, who were not in the Muslim League, also were quite convinced in favor of separation. The idea was more vividly expressed by M.A. Jinnah in an article in the London Weekly Time and Tide on 9 March 1940. Jinnah wrote, democratic systems based on the concept of homogeneous nation such as England are very definitely not applicable to heterogeneous countries such as India, and this simple fact is the root cause of all of India's constitutional ills. If, therefore, it is accepted that there is in India a major and a minor nation, it follows that a parliamentary system based on the majority principle must inevitably mean the rule of major nation. Experience has proved that, whatever the economic and political program of any political party, the Hindu, as a general rule, will vote for his caste fellow, the Muslim for his coreligionist. About the Congress-led provincial governments, he wrote, an India-wide attack on the Muslims was launched. In the five Muslim provinces every attempt was made to defeat the Muslim-led coalition ministries, in the six Hindu provinces a Kulturkampf was inaugurated. Attempts were made to have Bande Mataram, the Congress party song, recognized as the national anthem, the party flag, and the real national language, Urdu, supplanted by Hindi. Everywhere oppression commenced and complaints poured in such force, that the Muslims, despairing of the viceroy and governors ever taking action to protect them, have already been forced to ask for a royal commission to investigate their grievances. Furthermore he added, is it the desire of British people that India should become a totalitarian Hindu state? and I feel certain that Muslim India will never submit to such a position and will be forced to resist it with every means in their power. In his concluding remarks he wrote, while Muslim League irrevocably opposed to any federal objective which must necessarily result in a majority community rule under the guise of democracy and parliamentary system of government. To conclude, a constitution must be evolved that recognizes that there are in India two nations who both must share the governance of their common motherland. Lahore Conference 
The session was held on March 22–24, 1940, at Iqbal Park, Lahore. The welcome address was made by Sir Shah Nawaz Khan of Mamdo, as the chairman of the local reception committee. The various draft texts for the final resolution – draft were deliberated over by the Special Working Committee of the All India Muslim League The resolution text, unanimously approved by the subject committee, accepted the concept of a united homeland for Muslims and recommended the creation of an independent Muslim state. The resolution was moved in the general session by A. K. Fazlul Huq, the Chief Minister of Undivided Bengal, and was seconded by Chaudhry Kalikazaman from the United Provinces, Zafar Ali Khan from Punjab, Sardar Aurangzeb Khan from Northwest Frontier Province, and Sir Abdullah Haroon from Sindh. Qazi Muhammad Isa from Baluchistan and other leaders announced their support. The statement. The resolution for the establishment of a separate homeland for the Muslims of British India passed in the annual session of the All India Muslim League held in Lahore on 22–24 March 1940 as a landmark document of Pakistan's history. In 1946, it formed the basis for the decision of Muslim League to struggle for one state later named Pakistan for the Muslims. The statement declared, no constitutional plan would be workable or acceptable to the Muslims unless geographical contiguous units are demarcated into regions which should be so constituted with such territorial readjustments as may be necessary. The Hindu press and leaders were quick to describe the resolution as the demand for the creation of Pakistan. Some people began to call it the Pakistan Resolution soon after the Lahore session of the Muslim League. It is landmark document in history of Pakistan. Additionally, it stated, that adequate, effective and mandatory safeguards shall be specifically provided in the constitution for minorities in the units and in the regions for the protection of their religious, cultural, economic, political, administrative and other rights of the minorities. Most importantly, to convince smaller provinces such as Sindh to join, it provided a guarantee that geographically contiguous units are demarcated into regions which should be constituted, with such territorial readjustments as may be necessary that the areas in which the Muslims are numerically in a majority as in the northwestern and eastern zones of British India should be grouped to constitute independent states in which the constituent units should be autonomous and sovereign. Interpretation There remains a debate on whether the resolution envisaged two sovereign states in the eastern and western parts of British India. Abdul Hashim of the Bengal Muslim League interpreted the text as a demand for two separate countries. In 1946, Prime Minister H. S. Surawardi of Bengal, a member of the All India Muslim League, mooted the United Bengal proposal with the support of Muslim and Hindu leaders, as well as the Governor of Bengal. However, it was opposed by Lord Mountbatten, the Muslim League, the Congress and the Hindu Mahasabha. Although there were and continue to be disagreements on the interpretation of the resolution, it was widely accepted that it called for a separate Muslim state. Opposing opinions focus on the phrase, independent states, claiming this means Muslim-majority provinces, i.e. Punjab, Sindh, etc. would be independent of each other. They ignore the phrase, geographically contiguous units. They also rely on the claims of certain Bengali nationalists who did not agree with one state. They accuse their opponents of diverting the spirit of the resolution. The majority of the Muslim League leadership contended that it was intended for not only the separation of India but into only two states Muslim majority and Hindu majority. Therefore, it is indeed a statement calling for independence and one Muslim state. Eventually, the name Pakistan was used for the envisioned state. <inaudible> Pakistan Resolution in the Sindh Assembly The Sindh Assembly was the first British Indian legislature to pass the resolution in favour of Pakistan. G. M. Syed, an influential Sindhi activist, revolutionary and Sufi and later one of the important leaders in the forefront of the Sindh independence movement, joined the Muslim League in 1938 and presented the Pakistan Resolution in the Sindh Assembly. A key motivating factor was the promise of autonomy and sovereignty for constituent units. 
This text was buried under the Minar-e-Pakistan during its building in the Ayub regime. In this session the political situation was analyzed in detail and Muslim demanded a separate homeland only to maintain their identification and to safeguard their rights. Pakistan Resolution was the landmark in the history of Muslim of South Asia. It determined for the Muslims a true goal and their homeland in northeast and northwest. The acceptance of the Pakistan Resolution accelerated the pace of freedom movement. It gave new energy and courage to the Muslims who gathered around Muhammad Ali Jinnah for struggle for freedom. Topic: <laughs> Commemoration. To commemorate the event, Minar-e-Pakistan, a monument 60 meters tall in the shape of a minaret, was built at the site in Iqbal Park where the resolution was passed. The 23rd of March Pakistan Day is a national holiday in Pakistan to commemorate both Lahore Resolution 1940 and the Republic Day 1956. The country became the first Islamic republic in the world. Topic: See also History of Pakistan Partition of India Pakistan Resolution in Sindh Assembly